Enjoyment performance theory is the first of the two Harrison theories that you'll uh, come across when you start debriefing or reading over your assessment. It is important that you do read through that assessment and you print the materials that are requested to be printed. Enjoyment's performance theory. All right, let's pretend that um, we're going to talk about public speaking. Enjoyment performance theory simply means if I enjoy doing something, so I enjoy it, I do more of it, so I practice. If I practice, I become proficient. If I become proficient, I get compliments. And if I get compliments, I enjoy doing it more. Very basic, it's brilliant. Because if you remember the previous video, I talked about behaviors. Behaviors are always based on beliefs. Beliefs are always based on experiences. Well, if I'm public speaking and I like to do it, it's because I believe I can. I believe I'm good enough. Well, that's why it works. Now, the opposite is also true. What if I don't enjoy public speaking? I don't practice it. I don't become proficient. I don't get compliments, so I don't enjoy it more. It's that straightforward. That's why it's called enjoyment performance theory, and you will find all of this is normally going to be found at the subconscious. You know what? You might be able to articulate it cognitively, but it will be a subconscious function. Now, how does it measure? It's a 2, 10 scale, 6 being right in the middle, being neutral. But in the 210 scale, we're going to measure it in this fashion. The further you move from the center, the more intense your preference. As you move left of center of the six, your intensity starts to grow. Those are supposed to be larger incrementally until you get down to the two, where that's the highest preferred not to. So if I don't like public speaking, I'm going to be on the left of six. So I prefer not to. If I just moderately don't like it, then it's going to be a maybe in the fives and it's a little bit. But what if I really like public speaking? Well, I'm going to be up closer to the 10. So it's going to be something like this. It simply measures incremental by intensity of preference. So when you look at your numbers, that's how you measure it. When you look at your traits and definitions, you'll see that it's a descending order. The top five are your life themes. That's what makes you tick. What's really interesting is you compare the top five, what really makes you tick, and then go look at the things that you prefer not to do or strongly prefer not to do. One thing to remember is there's no right and wrong. It doesn't mean that you're bad or good because you have a preference. It means it's what you prefer to do or not to do. It also has nothing to do with competency. I don't prefer to work very precisely, dot all the uh, I's and cross all the T's. I don't prefer to do that. But over the, my history and my career, I've learned to be quite proficient at being precise. It's a learned behavior. It's not a preferred behavior. There's where my personality comes in. All right, we have one more video to go. That's going to be on paradoxes. Hopefully this helps, so as you look through your enjoyment performance theory on your traits and definitions, this is the meaning behind it. Thanks.